Hello everyone. I hope you are doing fine. Today's webinar is on TEC, Teaching English to Children. Okay, today we are going to talk about how to create a positive learning environment, familiarize with very young learner and young learner characteristics, and also talk about learning styles for teaching to children. Okay, let me see how many words that you can make with these letters. You know, more letters in your word, so you get more points. Like pen, because there are three letters, you get one point. But if you make some words longer, more points. So you just have 15 seconds. You can't go for chicken because she No, there's no K. But there's one C, so not the clinic. No, yeah, that's two letters. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Then, yep. Lend, that's nice, four letters. Bravo, so what is it? It's warm up. It's always good to start your class with a warm up. Mm -hmm, to brick the eyes. Okay, let's fill in the blanks. Use more. Eights. Use more visual aids, bravo. Use more language, especially in your young learners and very young learners classes. Actually, it goes for all classes, by the way. As a teacher, we need to use more body language. Say less and Mm-hmm. Act more. Yes, your students get bored when you talk a lot. Use bored more. It's usually uh, helps visual learners a lot. Also, when you write something on the board, it gets attention. And you highlight important features. Break big task into small chunks when you give instructions to your students it's good to go step by step for example you ask them okay open your books turn to page 35 good now look at exercise a bravo and do part one and two, or write the answers in your notebook. So you check with them, mm -hmm. step by step. Let's go to the next slide. Make sure the activity, yeah, exactly, makes sense to your students. Sometimes we like, I mean, we teachers like some activities, but necessarily, Make sense, huh? They make sense to students. Start with what students? No, exactly. We always start from known to unknown. Start with the whole class, not only sharp students. Mm -hmm. 
it's better you ask all together. Definitely, we never ignore any of them, even the shy ones. And give students more. That's it. More thinking time. They need time to understand what you're saying. So they need to think. When you ask them to do an activity, so say, okay, you have four minutes. So they have enough time to understand what's going on or what, what you have told them. That's thinking time. They think and overthink to what they have learned. Bravo. Thank you. Okay. So, how can we make or how can we create positive atmosphere in the class? What do you think? Back to your experience. We discussed in previous webinars if we want to have good class or more successful course, it's better your students trust you and feel comfortable. How it happens when you can create positive atmosphere in your classes. So your students can trust. If I make mistakes, that's fine. Nobody laughs at me. My teacher is here to help me out. I can ask the question a hundred times. He or she never gets angry. <laughs> okay? And my teacher kindly explains it again. And they feel comfortable. So it's better they have more gains, more group working, more pair working, so they know each other, they feel comfortable in the class, they trust each other, and they are in a group, and they have fun. They know it's a place. Not only they learn something, but they can make friends, and they enjoy the class. This is positive atmosphere. So singing with them, playing, different games with together, drawing together, learning together. So that's positive. So they feel good. There are two crucial points in your classes, how to start the class and how to end it. You need to start the class in a way that you can boost the energy. So like singing, even even like physical activities, jumping up and down or singing together or maybe have very short games, walking around and talk to your friends, okay? You can put some questions, for example, on the board and say, why don't you go around the class in your face-to-face -face classes? Why don't you go around the class and ask your friends? But ask your friend, what did he or she do last weekend? Okay. On the other hand, on the other hand, uh, in your online classes, you can put your students in groups. Mm -hmm. You can put your students in groups. And then... Uh, in breakouts, give them some questions or project or task, and they can consult with each other or even asking each other, what did you do last weekend? Then you can monitor them. And how to finish it? Not just by checking homework. It's much better you check their homework during the class. So again, some fun games or activities or talking. So when they enter the class, they love the class. And when they leave, with a good memory.
Thank you. What makes young learners different from other learners? Talking about young learners, we mean what age? Mm -hmm. Very young learners are from four, five, and six. Yes, from four to six, preschool usually. But young, the young learners, usually students who go to elementary school from 7 to 11 or maybe 12 but usually 7 to 11 young learners are they the same as adults and teenagers mm -mm, of course not young children do not come to the language classroom empty-handed definitely they bring with them an already well-established set of instincts skills and characteristics which will help them to learn another language we need to identify those and make the most of them for example children are already very good at interpreting meaning without necessarily understanding the individual words so that's why i said use but oops sorry body language and act more than talking a lot. They can guess. They have a very good imaginary. Okay? They can guess and they can imagine what they say, what you are saying. They already have great skill in using limited language creatively. You know, uh, if they don't know how to say or ha how to ask permission to go out for water, they say, water, or even teacher, water, yeah, they use it, they use the language. And they frequently learn indirectly rather than directly because they absorb the language. Just look at children, how do they learn their first language, their mother tongue? They just imitate, they absorb what people are saying. And they take great pleasure in finding and creating fun in which they do. So it's good when you're planning for your class, you always think about entertainment part, fun part, because they really love it. And they have ready imagination. When they said, okay, imagine it's raining. And they said, oh, it's raining. <laughs> so they can imagine. But they have short concentration span mm -hmm. and short term memory. So that's why we need to practice and repeat the same thing via variety activities. Mm -hmm. uh, mostly they can concentrate up to 10 minutes, but they get older, definitely longer. But at first, very young learners, they can concentrate up to seven or maybe eight minutes. Then they start to look around and they won't listen to you. So you need to change or you need to act. Even by walking around or using your hands, facial expressions. So you get using props like this, finger props. It really helps. They love these things. Okay, so you get their attention. What do young learners need? Developing brain ability, like coloring, painting, cutting, pacing. They don't know how to use their muscles. They don't have good control on fine muscles. So by cutting, coloring, and painting, it doesn't mean they are clumsy because they fell everything not that because they don't have good control so through these activities they can develop their ability also loving eye contacts smile using so use your first name noticing security and joy so call them by their first name physical movement as we talk they get tired very soon. 
So TPR, which stands for Total Physical Response, like move up activities, icebreakers, go and bring something, show it to the webcam, and go and bring something green. Yes, this is braggy, it's green, and it's small. Bravo, thank you. Or show me you're happy or sad, or show me it's raining, or fly your plane, fly your plane. I can drive your car, that is CPR, total physical response. Get engaged, engagement for all the students, very important. So uh, keep asking them questions. Ask them to do something. Even, even they cannot talk a lot, they're in lower levels, they cannot talk a lot, but they can have move up activity or physical activities. And lots of experiences, creativity, having fun. And remember, they learn holistically. So we need to consider all, we need to consider all learning styles. Good. These students, oops, <laughs> these students absorb languages effortlessly and very capable to, and very capable to imitate speech sound. They just follow you. They imitate what they learn. So it's very important that the language in the class should be at the level of their understanding. Just one step above. They respond best to activities and learning situation relating to their own interests and experiences. That's why we say it's good to make sense for them. So it's good to talk about their world. Although they have short attention span, they have great patience for repetition of the same activity or game. They never get tired. So that's why each time they say, okay, let's play Simon Says, let's play Simon Says, because repetition, it's not boring for them. They love it. When they like an activity, they like to have it repeatedly and it's fine. And definitely because they practice more the target language that you use in your game. So because they practice more, definitely they learn better. I said they learn holistically. So think about learning styles. You remember what are those linear learning styles? The popular ones? Mm hmm. VARC, visual, auditory, reading and writing, and kinesthetic. Visual learners, they need to see. So that's why we take posters, pictures, videos. Auditory ones, they need to listen. So we take audios and you need to explain to them. They need to hear something to learn. Reading and writing, they need worksheets. They need text or context to read and take notes. So they have to do activities or do exercises. And kinesthetic one, they need to act. They need to see, and sometimes they catch it. Oh, that's a frog, or this is doll, or it's green, or uh, show me you're flying. Mm -hmm. Show me you're flying, or or sitting, or cooking. Mm -hmm. So they need to act like role play. But also interpersonal, intrapersonal, some, some students like to talk about it, some students need to think about it. But these four VARC are very common. So while you're planning for your class, consider all these activities. You take pictures, you take posters, sometimes you 
uh, um, take videos to the class and also um, audios or songs. Mm -hmm. You prepare worksheets to do or reading to read and all games or role plays. So different activities for all students because we don't know. Some are visual, some are auditory, and some are both visual and kinesthetic. So it's better while you're planning for activities, you consider all, and you have different exercises, different activities for all learners. On the other hand, as modern teachers, you remember the four C's. Communication, like pair working, group working, collaboration, doing tasks together, together, doing projects, critical thinking, mm -hmm. looking at problems and find a new way. So challenging, make them learn better. Exactly. So ask them questions, put them in groups to talk or to do a task and they think about it and creativity, trying new approaches to get things done. Mm -hmm. So, said, I want you for next time, talk about something interesting about your house. So, it is based on critical thinking and creativity both, yeah. Maybe they record and they make a short video. Maybe they draw. Maybe they come and only talk. Maybe they bring some stuff and say, okay, these are the things I have in my bedroom. Different ways, like open learning. What kinds of activities long learners should have in their classes? Based on what we were talking, variety of activities because we have different learners. Visual attractions like pots, puppets to take their attention because they have short concentration span. Toys and games, it's all about their world and they like it. And songs and chants, it's also part of their words. And they learn vocabulary, grammar, pronunciation, intonations through songs. And they can remember it much easier and much better. So why songs? Because songs are a great way to become accustomed to the sounds and rhythms of a language. These rhythms and sounds are also easier to remember. And songs can also create the right mood in the class. Yeah, it's fun. They even sometimes they act what they are singing. And why games? Games encourage the development of social skills. Games cater to different learning styles. Through games, you, have, you consider visual, you consider auditory because they talk about something or they listen to others. And uh, it's game, <laughs> yes. So physical movement. And sometimes they have to write or even read something. So it's good for all learning styles and games increase motivation and also they enjoy their learning like this it is fun and instead of talking about different parts of body just as a human you can say why don't you draw your monster mm -hmm. and then talk about different parts of your monster, body of your monster. So it has four arms. Oh, one big uh, eye. So 
So it's fun. Mm -hmm. So it is fun. Back to what we are saying. You need to know your children, your students. You need to know what they like. You remember, we always said the very first step is knowing your students. So when we're talking about knowing your students, it means their hobbies and interests. And you, you need to know what they like. So that's talking about their interests. Why? Since you are planning, mm -hmm, since you are planning for your class, you talk about those issues that they love. You need to earn their trust. They trust you. I'm here and my teacher always helped me. I feel comfortable and I trust this class. No stress. You need to base your teaching around the topic or a theme. So today is on, for example, using simple present tense. So all the activities are around simple present tense. Or today they are learning about vocabulary that they use in their daily activities. So all the time, the games, the songs, pictures, videos are around daily activities. Definitely in this way they can remember better. You need to engage and challenge them. So engagement, they learn. And challenging means critical thinking part. So they start to think. These are golden rules. Good. Any questions? Mm -hmm. What about different methods? See, hear, do. This is one that we use for children. They see, they listen, they act. Like, hug your teddy. Hug your teddy. Then they hear it. Hug your teddy. Hug your teddy. Okay? Then you stop. Hug your teddy and check with your student. Kinds of check-in questions. Mm-hmm. Fly your plane. Psh. Fly your plane. Psh. So they hear. Sometimes you ask them to repeat. Fly your plane. And they repeat. And you check their pronunciation. Then you stop. Okay. Hug your teddy. Fly your plane. Wash your hands. Wash your hands. Good. Fly your plane. Hug your teddy. Now wash your hands. Okay, good. Even later, you can ask one student to ask the others, or you can put them in pairs and they ask each other. TPR. Total physical response, we already talked about it. So it's a method of teaching language or vocabulary concepts by using physical movement to react to verbal input. The process mimics the way that infants learn their first language. They always imitate and it re reduces the students and inhibitions and lower stress. So it's that open the door, they go and open the door. Close the door, they go and like close the door. Point to the ceiling, point to the floor. Point to the window, point to the door. <laughs> yeah, that's the sound. Oh, okay. Oh, wash your hands. Show me. Wash your hands. Brush your teeth. So they just, it's, it, instead of verbally answer they act it this is another method it works for a lower level and e s a engage so it's like presenting engage study they practice and activate they produce so they get engaged and they understand what they're saying. For example, they're doing an activity or 
just they, back to that daily activity. I wake up every morning at seven o'clock. I wake up every morning at seven o'clock. Okay, what time you wake up? What time do you wake up? You wake up at eight. So she wakes up at eight. What would you do, Kim? Mm, you wake up at eight. Very good. So Kim and Emmy wake up at eight. This is engaging. Now study. Put them in pairs and set what time you wake up, what time you have breakfast, what time you go to school, what time you play video games. Mm -hmm. These daily activities. That's the study part. So they practice, maybe even they do some, they have to write something or do different activities or exercises. Later, they can come up and talk about their daily activities. That's activate. They produce what they have learned. Another example could be comparative and superlative adjectives. So you bring this picture to the class. Mm -hmm. I said, okay, look at them. Which one is bigger? Mm -hmm. What can you see? Cow, a horse, a, sh a, a pig, a dog, a rooster. So cow is very, very big. So this is engaging. Then you say, the cow in this picture is bigger than the horse. The cow is bigger than the horse. The horse is bigger than the ship. Okay? And they repeat it. Mm -hmm. This is a study part. Oh, the rooster is smaller than the dog. The dog is smaller than the pig. This is a study part. Then they go in their groups and say, I want you to draw some animals and compare them. So they draw an elephant. The elephant is bigger than a tiger. Bravo. Mm -hmm. But a mouse is smaller than an elephant. That part is activated when they produce it. So assessment is also a part of teaching. We have two kinds of assessment, formative assessment and summative assessment. In formative assessment, it's like um, reviewing after three units. Usually in modern books, you have look back part or review part. Mm -hmm. After three lessons, mostly, or two lessons, oh, there's a part, they read, there are some exercises to review the important objective of previous lessons that is formative so you get the feedback you get the feedback and you, it's feedback on their learning and your teaching how well they can remember or how well they can use the language summative assessments as like academic progress so midterm quizzes and final when they want to go to a higher level so we have formative assessment and summative assessment and both are necessary, definitely. So the very first question you always ask yourself, so who are we going to teach? Mm -hmm. Are we going to teach adults, teenagers, young learners, or very young learners? And what are we going to teach? What is the lesson? To identify the terminal objective and enabling objective. Terminal objective is the final aim of the class. What the students will be able to do at the end of this session. And what about enabling objectives? It's looking at the linguistic part, what they have learned to get to that terminal, what vocabulary, what grammar, what skill, Today, for example, is speaking and listening, or reading and writing, or reading and speaking. What are skills? And when you write in your lesson plan, I just want to remind you, when you write for a vocabulary, you have to attach the list. And also, 
in vocabulary part, it's not only conveying the meaning, but also pronunciation. Sometimes you work on intonation. So who are we going to teach and what are we going to teach? Young learners or very young learners? Grammar, vocabulary, phonics, reading, listening, speaking, or writing. Maybe one or two. Which ones? And then in process, you write about the stages that you need to cover. The process goes to pre teaching, while teaching, post teaching, and definitely relative homework to practice what they have learned at home. So pre teaching is like engagement part. Mm -hmm. They get engaged. You activate their background knowledge. You ask them some questions. The challenging part, they start to think, then you present. For why they have to practice the for and the usage. So they understand when to use it and then how to use it and what is the for. When they learn in grammar part, for example, when they learn about simple present tense, so what is the form? Mm -hmm. S for third person, for example, simple form of the verb, but we add S for third person, he, she, and it. But when to use it? When we are talking about our regular things or fact things. We're not going to explain it, but they learning through different activities since they are children. They imitate. And post task is a part that you activate what they have learned when they own the language. They use it and talk about their real life. Definitely relevant homework because they need to practice what they have learned in the class at home to remember it better. We taught that it should work on their creativity. So it's like give them open activities. Don't put them in the box. Let them be creative. We're going to discuss it then. Here is about what techniques do we use to teach words. So when you want to teach words, you work on meaning, pronunciation, and usage. Definitely the spelling. Mm -hmm. Definitely the spelling. So convey the meaning through different techniques using the vocab in the context we always create a context for students since they remember it better through pictures drawing realia ava stands for audio visual aids miming like swimming mm -hmm. flying miming cooking Cooking, synonym and antonym for a bit higher level. Klein, like drawing a line and said, always, never. You can make the meaning. Examples or telling story in a story. They can guess the meaning. They can understand the meaning. Then you work on pronunciation. You ask them to repeat. Interesting. Interesting. Even you clap on a stress syllable. Interesting interesting and you listen to them concept checking our questions we always ask concept checking questions ccq to be sure they got the correct meaning of the word and spelling lower levels smaller words three letter words or four letter words higher levels longer words and sentences mm -hmm. Like here, this is a picture. So I said, look at this. What can you see in this picture? Yes, she's a teacher. She's an English teacher. But look here. She's the secretary. Okay, repeat secretary. Secretary. Secretary is too hard for them to write. They just really learn it. So which one is a teacher? Point to the teacher. Now point to the secretary. Okay, show me your secretary. I said, uh uh. They have very good imagination. Yes, and now show me a teacher. 
Hello, how are you? So they're writing on the board. That's a CCQ. Now music teacher or playing the violin or the piano. They can show it to you. Mm hmm Yes. Yeah, they're doing the sport. Sport teacher. Very good. And here is a climb. Here is a climb. Freezing, swelling. So it's a cold, chilly, cool, mild, warm, hot, boiling. So it's much easier to understand what's the difference. Or always, never. Otherwise, it's very hard to explain what you mean by sometimes. So Klein helps a lot. We never forget CCQ and ICQ. CCQ stands for Concept Checking Question. Just to check your students. Mm -hmm. If they understood what you were talking about, what are you saying? They can understand it. They have learned what you, what you just told them. Okay? And you can get their attention. It's a good feedback for yourself. Okay. They learned this part. Let's go to the other part. ICQ stands for instruction. Checking questions. When you give them an instruction to do, Mm -hmm. When you give them an instruction, for example, do activity four, and you have to answer in long sentences, and you need to write it in your notebook. So, very beginning, you ask them, is it a short answer or long answer? They say long answer. So, in long answer, you just write, yes, it is, or no, it isn't. No, you have to write the whole sentence. Bravo. Are you going to talk about it or write about it? I write about it. Where are you going to write? In our notebook. So you check everything. That's instruction checking questions. So from the very beginning, you become sure. Okay, you're sure that everybody understands it. Then definitely you go through them or you monitor them in breakouts and check they're doing the right track or they are on the right track and they're doing correctly. Grid helps for spelling. Find uh, a tool, a writing tool. So they find pen and draw a line. So it's fun and it's a game. You can put it as a game. Who can draw and find it faster? It's fun too when you're working on spelling. It's not all, always like, okay, like dictation, write pen or pencil or cap or uh, tab. Just we want to make it a bit different. To engage your student and increase their engagement. And they enjoy it. The very first thing that we talk. Let them enjoy their learning. Games like you can make cards or even digital cards. And they click. They can find synonyms. They click and they can make sentences. Or they click working on comparative so big the click and find bigger with the correct spelling double g for example many games true cards what do we teach in conversation time conversation time is a speaking time yep yeah? so what do your students learn through speaking subtopics or sub skills. Functions, pronunciation, vocabulary, grammar. Also, stress and intonation. Mm -hmm. So, it's not only speaking. In conversation time, you are working on listening, speaking as well. So, they listen and you ask them some general questions. Functions like making suggestions, making invitations, giving advice. So they get familiar. In this situation, I use these chunks. Pronunciation, so they listen and sometimes you even you ask them to repeat some sentences to work on their intonation or sentence stress. New vocabulary and even they practice the grammar part. Look at this dialogue, for example. Let's walk to the shops. What's the weather like? It's sunny. Don't put on your coat, please. Hot today. Put on your sun hat, please. 
Oh no, it's windy. My hat, because it's windy. Catch it. Oh no, now it's raining. We haven't our umbrellas. Let's go home. Quick, open the door. Where is the key? Oh no, I haven't the key. No, we are all wet. So this is the dialogue. How do we start it? The very first step, we need to put them in the context so we can show them these pictures. I said, okay, look at this picture. What can you see in these pictures? Where are they? Are they inside or outside? Look at their clothes. Is it hot or cold? So one picture shows grandchildren. I mean, both picture shows grandchildren go out with their grandparents. But in one picture, mm -hmm, left side, and it's warm. They're wearing what are they wearing? T-shirts. And how what's how's the weather? It's sunny. But look at the next picture. So it's cold because they're wearing coats and they are inside. What are they doing? Shopping. Is that good? Now listen to this dialogue. And but before listening to the dialogue, the keywords, you just check with your students if they know the keywords. So you can show them the picture and say, look here, what's the weather like? How's the weather? It's raining. It's raining. So two techniques, picture and miming. It's raining. It's raining. Bravo. It's raining. Then you ask them to repeat. It's raining. It's raining. It's raining. Now this one. It's sunny. Mm -hmm. It's sunny. What about this? Bravo. It's hot. Mm -hmm. Now show me it's raining. Kind of checking questions. Very good. It's raining. What about this one? It's sunny. Mm -hmm. And it's hot. What's this? It's it's windy. Okay, pronouncing W for some students with different back first language. Modern language, sometimes it's pronunciation of W is difficult, so they say windy. So you need to practice windy, windy, windy. It's windy, bravo. So windy, windy. Mm -hmm. And look here, it's all wet. It's all wet. When you wash your hands, your hands are wet again wet wet good look here what's she wearing she's wearing a sun hat she's wearing a sun hat because it is sunny but he's wearing a coat because it's cold so Tommy's mother said, put on your coat, put on your coat. Now everybody, turn on your webcam, put on your hat, put on your hat. Mm -hmm. Show me, this is good for a kinesthetic one. Put on your coat. And it's like, very good. Put on your t-shirt. Yes, put on your t-shirt. Of taking that then you check with your students. So look, with first picture, it's raining, it's windy, it's snowing. They know it, but you just review some of the words they have already known. Sunny, hot, cold, and wet. Now's the time. So you put them in the context. They know what's going on. What is this dialogue about? They know the keyword. Now listen. Mm -hmm. Now, listen to the dialogue and tell me what's the weather like. So, they listen to the same dialogue and they say, okay, first it's sunny, then windy, after that it's raining. Good. Now, so you put this slide. I want you to listen and fill in the blanks. 
First, you can talk with your students. Maybe you can guess the blank. So you put them in pairs. They said, let's go to the shops. What's the weather like? It's sunny. Don't put on your coat. Otherwise, you play the audio parts again. Here it says, let's go to the shops. It's a function, suggestions. They don't know it's a function, but they understand when you want to do something with your friends, you can start it with let's, when you want to give suggestions. Mm -hmm. More challenging. So you can make it a bit difficult for them. Again, they are in pairs and say guess part B. And then guess part A. If they want to listen to the tape, or listen, I'm sorry, if they want to listen to the audio, that's fine. They can listen. But the important thing is they use the new function, the new vocabulary, no matter the changes. Instead of raining, they say it's snowing. That's fine. First windy, then raining. They said snowing, then windy. That's okay. We never ask our students to memorize anything. Why? Mm -hmm. Because when they memorize it, they will forget it soon. But when they understand and they practice, they can remember much better. After practice, that was the practice part. And definitely you check their intonation and pronunciation and stress the word and sentence stress. Then you put them in pairs and said, now you can make up your dialogue. Okay? You can even help them. Let's say you two go to a library, you two go to the park, you two go to a restaurant, you two go to school, or anywhere that you like. So you put them in pairs, you go around, monitor them in their, your online classes, you put them in the breakouts, and you monitor and you practice the dialogue. That was for speaking. Who is for the listening? Mm -hmm. So in listening part, You put them in the context, pre-teach the keywords, then play the listening. But the important thing is you need to give the activity first. This listening is talking about their daily activity. So it says, what do you do every day? What time do you get up? What time do you have breakfast? What else do you do in summertime? Do you walk your pet? Do you watch cartoons in the morning? So you ask them some questions and said, now you put them in a the context. Now I want you to listen to Mary and number the pictures. Okay. What she does first in the morning. Order the activity. So they listen and order it. In this listening, they need to comprehend the whole listening. Remember, we talked about top down and bottom up. Top down, focus on comprehension. So they understand what's going on in this listening. But bottom up is the linguistic parts. They practice the word, pronunciation or grammar, the linguistic part. Look here. They have to listen to the audio and fill in the blanks. A nurse works at a hospital. At a fire station, a firefighter works at a fire station. Mm -hmm. A farmer works on a farm. So this is bottom up, exactly. Because they're listening for the word. And they need to write it so we can check their spelling as well. But here, here, what does Peggy's dad do? Cashier, a teacher, a barber. So they need to comprehend that they should know the words both. So they listen to the audio, they understand, and then they choose the best answer. That was for practice. What about production? So pre, wine, post. Here is the post. Now they have some ideas about different jobs. 
because the whole listening was different carriers or jobs. They look at the pictures and say, oh, the first one is a police officer. Police officer works at police station. My mom is a police officer or my aunt is a police officer or my uncle is a police officer. The second one is chef, or he's a nurse, or she's a firefighter, or he's a teacher, or she's a doctor. Mm -hmm. So they talk about different jobs. This is post. Activate what they have learned. And as you know, we always talk about integrative skills. So they listen, but they produce speaking form, you know? So that's listening skills and speaking skills. Even you can ask them to write, so written or yeah. What about reading? The same process, free while post. In pre, you put them in the context, you put them in the context, you pre-teach the keywords. For example, you check your sunglasses, new words. Mm -hmm. You pre-teach the keywords, but not all the words. You give them a chance to guess the meaning. Mm -hmm. Then, after that, after that, they, you put them in pairs to skim it, go through it for higher level. Why they listen? Why they listen? It's good to listen to the audio because... Uh, just be sure that from the very beginning, they hear the correct pronunciation. They can hear, they have the opportunity to listen to the correct, uh, correct pronunciation. So they listen and go through the text. And later, they have to do some activity based on their general comprehension. After that, for scanning, you give them more challenging activities like true, false, or complete these sentences. So they have to go through it and find the rest of the sentence or decide whether the given sentences are true or false. And after scanning, you can check with them or even you put them in pairs to check with each other. Later, for post, we never ask summary. Because summary is a technique and you have to teach them how to give you a summary. But they can talk about different weather and what do they wear or what can they do? What can you do in cold weather in your country or in your city? Or what do you do in hot sunny weather? What do you wear? So they use the vocabulary or the structure they practice in the reading and they talk about their real life. That's you work on different types of writing like copying gap filling reordering words substitution guided writing creative writing not say writing for children but they write postcards letters and emails and invitation like birthday invitations so it's a mix of digital lesson and physical activity. So sometimes they write, sometimes they find something or they share or on social media, they send texts to each other because nowadays they all use cell phones. So why don't you use technology in your teaching? In three categories. Control writing, guided writing, and free writing. I'm going to share with you some activities. Like this is kind of copying. Mm -hmm. Look at the picture and find and write the first letter. So ant, A, hip, P. So it's at the level of working on letters. Oh, here, copy the word, the sentences. So it's working on space. I, space, then one. Space, then two. Space, then go. And how to write. So that's why I put them in three lines. This is another challenging activity. So they have to write here. Write it again. What's it working on? Capital letters. Start 
start the sentence with capital. So capital I. Mm -hmm. Or full stop. I went to my friend's place yesterday. Full stop. Or her name, capital H. Her name is Kimmy. Names with capital. So capital K. Even you can give them as a homework, as a homework or as an assignment. The fun part could be visualize. So when they want to say long, big, but write small, smaller than the size, or egg in the shape of a roll. So visualize the word. This is fun too. And they can be very creative in this matter. Masks or dolls, you can ask them to make masks for themselves or they bring their favorite dolls to the class and then they say okay i want you to show it to your friends or uh, ask your friend to write about your doll so this is my bunny it's a small it has two small ears two small black eyes pink small pink nose and these things mm -hmm. they can look at their friend's doll and they write and they write four or five sentences. When they are lower levels, they write words. Higher levels, sentences. For example, there's a level of flyer, okay? They can write a paragraph. But again, it's fun. Guided, they listen to the song and fill in the blanks. Or they look at the picture and fill in the blanks. Oh, McDonald had a farm. So they listen farm and they fill it. Or here, this is guided too. There is a puppy and a kitten near our home. Uh, you can make it more challenging for them when you put a picture, some, the, some pictures, and they have to write the whole sentence. Crosswords are also fun for them. You give them the definition and they find the word. And it's really challenging. You can even give them as a homework. But if you want them to write something for you, it's much better from easy to difficult. So first give them a sample to fill in the blanks. Then give the old day. For example, it's writing a paragraph, how to write a paragraph. So you give the information. So they already have the sample to give in the blanks. Then they have to write some parts. The third phase is write about yourself. So already they practice. Otherwise, it's going to be very difficult for them to write. So give them a sample. For teaching to children, we remember a starter for every lesson. Something that attracts their attention. So songs, games, dancing, sing stories, talking about the, their favorite character, move around activities or move up act physical activities. Like even in your online classes, go and bring, show me something, mine means something. And multiple short activities because they have short concentration spans and consider all types of learners, visual ones, auditory ones, kinesthetic ones, and even read and write. Lots of repetition. They love it. They love repeated activities. They never get tired if it makes sense to them. And they need to practice a lot because they have short concentration spans. And at the very end, a short recap. Okay? So, you just review what they have learned through a game or through a song or fun activity. These are good books for classroom management techniques and teaching young learners English. Very practical, especially this one, the management, the techniques, how to manage. It's not only for children, also teenagers, classroom management techniques. Jim's crew there. Okay, this is a code from Plato. 
do not train a child to learn by force or harshness, but direct them to it by what amuses their minds. That is exactly what we were talking. Let them feel comfortable, trust you, and they enjoy your learning. It needs planning. It's possible, it's possible, but it needs planning. Okay, thank you very much for if further questions. If you have any questions, simply you can send me a message on Instagram or email me at misariyalhamad.gmail.com. Thank you very much.